Um, they love how simple it is. They, they absolutely love that. And, and uh, you know, when I'm asked about our NPS score, mm -hmm. I, I usually, you know, my go-to answer for that is that one in five uh, users uh, have been referred by other users who basically assume that they are using it. Yeah. Because that's how popular it is. Uh, so uh, we have amassed now 106,000 users in Iceland. That's like a third of the nation almost. Yeah. So 20,000 of, of our users have onboarded because the other 80,000 just um, assumed that they were using it. Right. And they love it. So. So, you know, that, that's my NPS score, I say. Right, right. So there's yeah. a very strong networking uh, effect with this yes. uh, network yeah. effect. Sverir, it's uh, great meeting you. Thanks for coming down to speak to us. Thank you. So let's start by hearing a little bit about you. Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, my name is Sverir uh, Hedarsson, um, and I'm the head of FinTech at uh, Quika. And um, I came into Quigga recently uh, as a part of Ur, the peer-to-peer -peer payments app mm -hmm. that is the market leader in Iceland. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we have uh, four or five more fintech brands that we are sort of consolidating and, and, mm -hmm. and working with. So okay, that's all right. Um, tell us a little bit more about Ur. Yeah. Um, what's its core value proposition and what, how does it, what problem does it solve and how does it differentiate itself in the market? Yeah, it sort of, um, it simplifies your life. Mm -hmm. um, it saves you time and adds security to your payments. Right. Um, we started back in 2015 with peer-to-peer -peer payments and we wanted to sort of solve that headache, mm -hmm. uh, make that simpler. And with PST lo uh, PST two looming. Mm -hmm. We uh, wanted to jump the line, right. so we gave the customers the sort of account to account smooth experience from the get go, mm -hmm. whilst operating Santa's workshop, you know, behind right. the scene, <laughs> and um, and that's how we uh, managed to sort of amass uh, the user base that we have right now. Because if you fast forward now seven years. PSC2 just uh, just arrived on the scene mm -hmm. in Iceland yeah. now, so really quite late. Right. So if we if we would have waited uh, for that opportunity, you know, the the, the bus would have been been gone a long time ago. Right. Okay. And then help us understand why is Ur better than other mobile payment solutions in the market, like like Apple Pay or like Google Pay? What what, what makes it well, superior to this? At the post terminals, we are not compatible competitive with um, Apple Pay or Google Pay. Okay. Uh, but when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer payments or mm -hmm. online payments, mm -hmm. uh, places where you can uh, pay using your phone number alone, mm -hmm. you know, not, not leaving sensitive data like your credit card info or your account number, mm -hmm. uh, that's where we are really strong. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, we, uh, we do a lot of um, uh, online payments. Mm -hmm. And also we have um, installment loans, buy now pay later loans. Yeah. So that's how, how uh, uh, that's how we are. We have some numerous uh, benefits. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about the, the composition of us. So, so is or a, a bank or or how is it that you're enabled to do loans? Uh, we just became a part of a bank mm -hmm. uh, this April, but uh, for the last seven years we, we were not. Right. So uh, our loans were funded uh, through investment funds, acquirers, and and right. and then finally by Quicker Bank, who ended up buying the company. Mm -hmm. um, so we we always had to share the interest margin right. on our loans, yeah. mm -hmm. but I guess we don't have to anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's. Uh, that's pretty much how, how that was covered. Yeah. Um, and about our installment loans, the, the buy now pay later product, uh, it really works in two different ways. Mm -hmm. When you're buying online, uh, you are offered the solution to split the payments. Mm -hmm. But you can also go into the app and, and just apply for a loan for installment payments mm -hmm. uh, before you go and buy a product. Okay. So 
that has really taken off as well. So basically, buy now, pay later, and you take care of it before you enter the shop. Right. So you have the money in your pocket when you enter the shop, and then you go in and you ask for, um, you know, a lower price because you're paying cash. Right. Yeah. Of course. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. And now tell us a little bit about what your customers say about you. Yeah. Um, they love how simple it is. They, they absolutely love that. And and uh, you know when I'm asked about our NPS score, mm -hmm. I I usually you know my go-to answer for that is that one in five uh, users uh, have been referred by other users who basically assume that they are using it. Yeah. Because that's how popular it is. Uh, so uh, we have amassed now 106,000 users in Iceland. That's like a third of the nation almost. Yeah. So 20,000 of, of our users have onboarded because the other 80,000 just um, assumed that they were using it. Right. And they love it. So, so mm -hmm. you know, that, that's my NPS score, I say. Right, right. So there's yeah. a very strong networking uh, effect with the yes. uh, network yeah. effect. Um, now let's. I want to talk a little bit about the, the buy now, pay later, because of course we know that the functionality is, is, is gaining momentum all over Europe, and it's 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 a it's a great service. And this uh, this idea of embedding finance is is right. really solving a, a a problem for for customers, and I think also for banks who are increasingly saying, well, we don't really want to be part of the of the personal loan uh, market for for smaller purchases, just because it's not cost effective. Mm -hmm. However, we also see here that it represents perhaps a risk for customers that spend, it makes spending so easy and, and uh, entering credit so easy that perhaps some of them are falling into debt that, that they cannot repay in the future. So how, how is ER ensuring that they, they, you can still provide the service for your customers while at the same time uh, ensuring there's some um, guardrails to, uh, to prevent them from going into debt that they cannot pay? Well, um, the, the laws and regulations in Iceland are quite clear on that. Mm -hmm. you, you really have to do a lot of background checking right. b before you pay out a loan. Um, so uh, so it, it's really on you as a lender you know, to make sure that the person borrowing will be able to uh, pay the loan. Right. Otherwise, you should not give it out. By regulation, that's... Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So um, I guess, you know, the, we are quite advanced in, in, in sort of our credit models and credit checking mm -hmm. uh, and everything is automated so it's, it works quite fast. Right. So you can apply for a loan within the app and it, get it paid out, paid out in like 30 seconds. Oh, okay. It, it's really that fast. So. Yeah. Wow, that's, that's, that's very convenient. But while ticking all the boxes, you know, with, with credit checks and you know, regulations and everything. So. Mm. Okay. Now, tell, let's talk a little bit about building trust. Because yeah. uh, we continue to hear that the banks say, well, we have the customer's trust and that's why customers choose us. And So what's been the main challenges that you've found in bringing a product to market mm -hmm. uh, that requires a lot of trust without, in the beginning, without being a bank necessarily? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's an interesting one. It's, when we first started, we, we started as a product um, uh, at Nova, the, uh, the mobile operator, the favorite mo mobile operator in Iceland, mm -hmm. and so people took like uh, an instant liking to to our solution, and we were like solving this headache mm -hmm. of peer-to-peer -peer payments. But then it became tricky, like a couple of years later, when we entered the lending uh, scene, because people tend to be skeptic about lending products that are outside of the banks, yeah. and rightly so, because there had been sharks in the market. Mm -hmm. with, uh, outrageous payday loans and, and stuff like that. So we had to find a way to sort of distance ourselves and differentiate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found the solution in, in issuing a prepaid card at the same time. Mm. So we had uh, made a deal with MasterCard and we issued the card. And just having uh, one of the major uh, card brands connected with the product instantly creates uh, right. more trust. Indeed. And uh, you know, we lost money on that product, but, but we called it building our branches. Right. Um, and and uh, can you tell us a little bit about the business model behind our? What? Mm -hmm. How 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 does it make money? Yeah, we 
as I said earlier, we started the peer-to-peer -peer payments back in 2015, mm -hmm. and we've been subsidizing those ever since because PSD2 wasn't here, so we had to go through the card rails and yeah. whole, whole different things. Yeah. Um, but uh, we we made some money from the uh, from acquiring by the online payments. Mm -hmm. But uh, for three years now we've been cash positive, and that's basically thanks to our lending. With the buy now pay later, um, yeah. I, I guess the, the the idea is that there's no interest, or at least that the, the the main the main business model is not interest based. Um, well, we we have interest based installment loans. We, you you can buy up to uh, one million Icelandic, mm -hmm. and you can spread it out up to twenty four months. Right, and, and that's, that has an interest yeah, component. Yeah. All right, okay, right. got it, got it. Now, tell us a little bit about the vision for for our. What mm -hmm. what do you expect the company to to achieve within the next two to three years? Yeah, we we are working on uh, what we call bottling the magic. Bottling we, the magic. Bottling the magic. Okay. Yes. Because that's that's really what we want to do. Um, now we basically have a banking license, yeah. but we don't want to just uh, uh, digitize banking solutions for the sake of digitizing them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to find uh, ways to differentiate, so that, that's what I mean by bottling the magic. Right. Um, and if you look at the Icelandic market, there's been like a status quo for, for decades. Mm -hmm. You have the three incumbent banks, uh, and even during the 2008 crisis, their market share didn't didn't change. Okay. <laughs> so um, um, we really, you know, at, at the Quicker Group now, we have pretty much the same financial power as um, as any of the other banks, but we are only enjoying like three percent market share in the retail space. Right. So now with uh, Oir and it's uh, um, 106,000 customers uh, mm -hmm. today. And we have a couple of other uh, fintech solutions as well. Yeah. Uh, we hope to uh, bring uh, new products to the market, new solutions, uh, and finally burst that bubble. Right. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, you've piqued our interest. And in <laughs> are there any of these products that you could perhaps tell us a little bit about, or is this something that? Is well, that, not yet. that will be tough at this moment. Yeah. Right. But, but uh, yeah, we we are working on. Uh, uh, you know, making uh, new car products, for instance. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, that will be quite interesting. Well, then we'll we'll keep an eye on on uh, on Air and uh, the product development uh, of their portfolio. Yeah. And uh, in the meantime, we thank you so much for coming down and speaking to us. Uh, it's been great yeah. hearing. Thank hearing you. What you're doing. So. And good luck with your uh, with your uh, exhibition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.